Hey, everyone, we are back with the stars of the movie we just talked about. Believe it or not, we have stars on this show. It's <laughs> Tara Spencer Nairn, Leanne Balaban, the, uh, the, the co-leads of this fantastic film that we both really enjoyed. Uh, thank you guys so much for, for coming on the podcast. Happy to be here. Thanks for having us. I am. Um, so, I mean, I, I, you know, I've known Leanne now for over 20 years, which is crazy to say out loud, but it's true. And I feel like we never really talked about the experience while you were even having it. Like, I remember you getting the part, obviously. I remember you going to shoot the movie. Um, I remember you testing for it. I remember you auditioning, doing all the, the whole process of it. Um, but I, I guess I just sort of, you know, obviously through the lens of 2021, what, what was that experience like having never done anything like this before? You know, and, and it, it was, I mean, Pretty, it seems effortless. I mean, your performance in the film is great, but I'm just sort of curious as to sort of what it was like, that whirlwind. I mean, it was unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. I actually started auditioning for it when I was 17. So, I, I mean, I barely had, a, had had a job when I was 17, let alone auditioning to star in a movie. I It just, on so many levels, it was a new experience, like entering the world of work going to an office building to perform and being filmed um, and meeting all of these very interesting adults that I <laughs> that were involved in the movie business, which I had no experience in and didn't know no family or anything like who made movies or were in cinema or TV or anything like that. So just, just everything about it was novel um, and exciting. I, I had been like a, a high school theater nerd and was in the play. Like you remember, I always acted in high school and stuff, but I never really considered it a career. Like, I mean, yes, there were movie stars, but like, it's not something you actually could choose to do and have a profession or like that. It just, especially living in Toronto at the time, didn't seem like something I would ever pursue. I don't know. I was really interested in journalism. Um, I thought I did go to journalism school briefly, but anyway, um, yeah, it was just so crazy. It was so crazy to be a teenager and just have that opportunity and to keep getting called back. Like when I was convinced that it was terrible, every audition, I was like, no, that was really bad. That was really terrible. Um, yeah. So it just, you know what though, in hindsight, it had a sense of inevitability to it. Like just, I was called back about seven times over the course of mm -hmm. almost a year. So it was meant to be, it felt like kind of it was meant to be. Sure. Wow. Tara, what was your experience getting cast in this movie? I, I the basic research I did shows me it was not your first role. <laughs> uh, but it was, but it was, you were, you were, you were, yeah, you were obviously a you know, young actor at the time and it seemed like you had done some stuff before, but I was like fresh out of film school, Vancouver Film School. Um, I, I'd been in like a couple shows. I think I'd, I'd, uh, my big break was a guest star in the TV show called two. Mm -hmm. About this okay. guy who was twins. He had an evil twin. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> um, it was great show guys. Really great show. You got to research great. that. Yeah. Um, and I auditioned for this. And again, like I think as any actor auditions, you sort of audition and you're like, okay, see you later. And uh, they had callbacks in Vancouver. And I was, I think I was one of the only people who went in for Lou in Vancouver. And I remember, you know, after the fact, the casting director, John Comerford, actually was honest with me. And I didn't realize, but he was like, no, they asked me to just record you the whole time because the director and producer wanted to get a sense of your personality. Sure. And he was asking me all these crazy questions. And I was talking about getting kicked out of high school. <laughs> Sure. Like, being suspended and uh and then I found out that that essentially was like my audition like part of my audition um sure. but it took a really long time for me to find out because they actually wanted Natasha Leone in the role oh. and I think they didn't have uh -huh. the money okay. for her <laughs> so uh I kept I remember that summer I kept having my agent call every week and he was like I can't I can't keep calling to see if you're still the first choice so, you know, they kept calling and said, yep, you're still, you're still in the right. mix. You're still the ch choice, but they, you know, they were trying to pursue Natasha Leone. And I've actually spoken to the producers um, since then. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we were trying to get her. Couldn't get her though. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, well, thanks. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so have you guys watched the film like at all recently or have you watched it since it came out? I mean, has it, have you, have you sort of taken another look at it? I went to a I haven't recently. I went to a screening actually with uh, Jennifer Kawaja. They had a screening at the TIFF. Um, and actually Trisha Fish was there too. Oh, cool. Uh, was it uh, Jack Julia and Jennifer were there, Trisha. Um, it was Those so the bizarre. producers and screenwriters. Sorry, yes. <laughs> yes for sure. I'm just saying their names. <laughs> um, you know. Uh, I'm just curious was, as to really sort of weird. how it it how it really holds up yeah. it, it's, it's interesting because you know I, I saw it back in the day um yeah i don't I, I can't remember if i saw it at tiff or when it came out in theaters but i i obviously saw it and i had not seen it since then and kenny had had never seen the film when we watched it to talk about on the episode um and and there's a lot of things that hold up incredibly well and then there's some stuff mm -hmm. that obviously it's been 20 some odd years and you know we're just a, we're different people now and we're seeing it through a different lens um and i i kind of wanted to talk for a sec about the the andrew mccarthy relationship um the things that hold up really well are your performances yes. i was gonna say you guys are fucking great <laughs> and and also uh your storylines and your relationship yes, yes. and your dynamic yes. um yes. it's it, the andrew mccarthy stuff is a little cringy oh now. my gosh yeah. So um, cringy. Yeah, it's a little cringy. <laughs> yes. Oh, and also, I mean, oh. you know, the 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 photography, and and it really is a beautiful looking movie. It and, is. And yeah. um, and it's actually a little prescient in terms of um consent issues and um kind of the Me Too of it and female empowerment and female friendship. So there there is a ton about this movie that like um we loved and were really kind of impressed by, but. It was a little kneecapped by this Andrew McCarthy thing. <laughs> it's, we love. I mean, we think who, he's great. Yeah, we, and and obviously, you know, we love you guys in it. But Leanne, I'm curious. You know, you guys have an interesting chemistry, which we were, which I, I mean, it, it's when it crosses the line into obviously more than just friendship when things become a little cringy. And I guess my question to you is, how did you approach that? Did it seem cringy to you at the time? Did you feel like did you and Andrew talk about the relationship between these two characters in any way? You know, because as I said, like everything about this was a completely new experience. Sure, I had sure. no barometer for like anything that would be appropriate or not appropriate. But having said that, everything felt uh, relevant to the story that we were telling whenever, when we prepared and when we talked about the characters. And I didn't, you know, we do live in such a different world in 2021 that we have denormalized this kind of relationship between teacher student, which is like definitely socially uh, progress. But at the time I didn't know, I was not like, uh, I didn't have that lens. I didn't have that critical like gaze uh, as a teenager to be able to see that this was a fundamentally inappropriate relationship. To me, I was just living inside the character and inside the world of the story. I think I really did inhabit deeply mm -hmm. that, that sense of like, her ambition and tried to relate it to my own life. So I wasn't, I mean, it's even still difficult today, Terry, you could speak to this, like to fully invest yourself in a script in a part when you do have those like critical reflections on it. Yeah. I think like that still exists to this day, but definitely at the time, like being a naive teenager, I don't think I had that, that awareness um, back then. And actually hadn't even considered that aspect of the film until you two brought it up right now, which is obviously true, <laughs> but like, I just didn't, you know, I didn't have that, that sure. savvy at that age. Well, you're not I alone. Seen it in a long it, time. What it feels, I mean, Kenny and I talk about it on the episode, um, uh, you know, at length about sort of what's become kind of tropey about it. I mean, it became a real thing for a long time, certainly within the 90s and, and, and early 2000s of that sort of this power dynamic that existed um, and, and why so many movies sort of trafficked in that stuff. It's some, somehow, some way, uh, we kind of went through the Rubicon on it and it became you know, as you said, uh, Leanne, it became kind of okay. And we've gotten back to the place where it has been denormalized and it's not allowed anymore, you know, appropriately. But I'm actually, weirdly enough, watching movie from the 80s right now where it's very clear that this is a, where, where this relationship is 
something that happens and it's very clear that this is not appropriate that this is not something that can that can continue a teacher student relationship so it was you know 